Well, happy happy hour. I'm Dave, the basement bartender. Waffles and Mochi, episode eight, taught us about the flexibility of corn. You can show YouTube just how flexible you are by clicking the like and subscribe button below because somehow that relates to flexibility. Corn is categorized as a cereal grain, a vegetable, and a fruit. Aside from just throwing it on a grill or putting it in a pot of boiling water and eating it right off the cob, it can be treated and processed to be made into a numerous amount of products, both for humans and animal, on both the sweet and savory side. Hell, this stuff can even be made into a natural fuel that can propel a VW bus. And it's always a VW bus, isn't it? We're gonna focus on two different types of uses of corn today. One a liquid and the other is, well, it's gonna start a solid, but then we're gonna turn it into a liquid, two liquids. So let's get popping and get this thing started. So whether you realize it or not, corn has been utilized in cocktails since, well, since cocktails, at least since American whiskeys have been made in cocktails. And that's because corn is the primary and well, the defining ingredient in America's favorite whiskey, bourbon. Bourbon is a whiskey that is defined by several criteria. By law, to be sold as bourbon, it must be manufactured in the United States. It has to be distilled at no more than 160 proof. It must be aged in brand new charred oak barrels. It then must be put into that barrel at no more than 125 proof. And then it must be bottled at 80 proof or higher. But the number one criteria, other than being made in the United States, for bourbon is that it must be manufactured of at least 51% corn. Today we'll be making a variation of an old fashioned using a George Dickel Barrel Select Tennessee Whiskey. This particular whiskey has a mash that is 84% corn, 8% barley, and 8% rye. Technically, Dickel isn't really a bourbon. It's a Tennessee whiskey, but yet it meets all of the criteria of bourbon. The distillery that manufactures Dickel is located in Tullahoma, Tennessee. Now, to make themselves a Tennessee whiskey, they have to go through an extra step. After distillation, the whiskey slowly steeps through aged hard sugar maple. Now, while there's three bazillion different types of bourbon in the United States, there's only 11 manufacturers that make Tennessee whiskey. And only Dickel makes a Tennessee whiskey without the E. This is essentially just to set themselves a little bit apart from their competition. While Dickel is plenty corny enough to satisfy the theme of this drink, I wanted to add a little bit more corn. So I found a bunch of corn puns that are gonna shuck and amaze you. Wait, 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 no, don't hit the dislike button. Fine, okay, I'll make a syrup out of caramel corn then. This syrup was originally part of a cocktail called the Katie Cassidy that was developed by Demetra Overton. To make the corn syrup, bring two cups of water to a boil, reduce to a simmer, and then add two and a half cups of caramel corn. I'm using a store-bought crunch and munch as I'm hoping the peanuts will add some flavor components as well. Let that simmer for 10 minutes, then remove from heat and let it sit for an additional 10 minutes. Strain through a coffee filter and avoid pressing on the solids as this will create a cloudy syrup. While I can't be certain, I'm going to assume that once it's bottled, it will have a refrigerated shelf life similar to a one-to-one -one simple syrup. So I'd recommend consuming it all within one month. If you want to extend that, add about a half ounce of vodka or a neutral rum. And that's gonna add about two to three months to your refrigerated shelf life. Now let's make our caramel corn old fashioned. Place a large clear ice block off to the side so that the frost can melt off and it'll become crystal clear. I've added a link to my cocktail elements video, both in the description and at the end of this video, so you can learn how to make those without any molds or fancy equipment. In a double rocks glass, add half an ounce of our caramel corn syrup, followed by three dashes of aromatic bitters, and then an additional three dashes of orange bitters. Add the large clear ice cube and then 2.5 ounces of the dickel. Stir for a full minute. Since we're using the large ice, this will add a little bit of dilution, but not nearly as much as smaller formed ice. We want this to get cold and add a little water to open up the whiskey and of course blend all of our ingredients together. To garnish, we're going to slice off an orange peel, being careful to avoid the white pith, and squeeze the peel over the glass to release the oil. We can then add the peel, as well as a cocktail cherry, to the glass. 
or two cherries. And just like that, we have the caramel corn old fashioned. Cheers. The syrup is subtle, but I do taste the popcorn. It's more of an aftertaste. Uh, it comes through with a salty, caramelly sweet breath at the end. This is actually one of my favorite whiskeys, so I knew the caramel notes would come through, but it definitely is elevated from the caramel corn syrup than it would be if it were just neat or on the rock. This is not overly sweet. It is whiskey forward. I do get a subtle nuttiness. I'm not sure if that's from the whiskey or from the peanuts in the Crunch and Munch. The mixture of the two bitters is really rich and flavorful. I get both both the sweetness of the orange as well as a floral cinnamon from the uh, aromatic bitters and, and a little bit of a hint of cocoa on the back of the palate. I can feel the wind blowing over the cornfields. Oh, I just got a taste of butter. And a hint of salt, just a pinch. Yes. The first time in your lives, I think you've actually done something well. First time, that's a little harsh. I'll take it. The flexibility of corn truly knows no bounds as it makes both amazing foodstuffs as well as one hell of a whiskey. And who would have thought? A really good caramel corn syrup. I hope you enjoy this one. Cheers to you and in the spirit of waffles and mochi. Thanks, Obama. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit the like and subscribe button below. And of course, leave a comment telling me what you think. But you know, if this whole cocktail thing doesn't work out, I guess I could always fall back on my stand-up skills. A corn stock walks into the bar. The bartender says, hey, wanna hear a joke? The corn stock says, I'm all ears. What did baby corn say to mama corn? Where's popcorn? Maybe I should switch to telling jokes. I don't know what to do. I'm all corn-fused. No. No, definitely drinks. Stick to making drinks.